What we have here are a couple of in-betweeners. The Kia Cadenza and Nissan Maxima are bigger than mid-size sedans, but not as large as a full-size car. They're nicer than your average family sedan, but they're not quite at the level of a luxury car. And as similar as they may seem on paper, the execution of these two cars is very different. Don't judge a book by its cover, right? Well, with the Maxima and the Cadenza, it's okay to do just that. The Maxima features a more sporty, aggressive style, while the Cadenza has a more mature, conservative look. And that theme continues inside as well. The Maxima has a more driver-focused cockpit with a squared off steering wheel and a center console that's angled towards them. Nothing inside the Cadenza is offensive, but nothing is really exciting either. The Maxima has a better, more modern style, which makes sense as it is the newer car. The buttons and switches in here feel more premium, and I definitely like the style overall better. The steering wheel grips nicely, and all of the menu screens allow more customization of the car than compared to the Cadenza. A nice feature in the Maxima 2 is this cubby hole that's large enough to fit even an iPhone 6 Plus. Both cars come equipped with powerful V6 engines, a 3.5 liter making 300 horsepower in the Maxima and a 3.3 liter making 293 horsepower in the Cadenza. Despite the similar output, the two engines behave very differently. The Maxima's engine is smoother and more responsive, a lot of that having to do with the continuously variable transmission. This engine and transmission pairing is one of the best uses of a CVT on the market today. The V6 in the Cadenza is still a good engine, and at higher RPMs it really comes alive. The problem is it is hampered by the 6-speed automatic transmission. It's slow to react, and when it is making gear changes, they take a long time. Driving with the paddle shifters does improve things, but I find it hard to believe that many Cadenza owners are going to consistently drive the car using the paddle shifters. All that power and responsiveness in the Maxima does come at a price, and that is torque steer. The Nissan is constantly trying to break the front tires loose, and it's not just a byproduct of the power since the Cadenza doesn't have this quality. Handling is another area where the Maxima holds an advantage, as it corners quite well for a large car. It's not a sports car or a four-door sports car or whatever Nissan wants to call it, but for a big sedan it handles quite well. The Maxima is about 200 pounds lighter than the Cadenza, and you can really feel it when changing direction. Plus, to make it a little more responsive, there's a sport mode that doesn't just make the engine and transmission respond quicker, it also stiffens up the steering. And if you want a little more sport in your Maxima, there is the SR model that adds a sport tuned suspension and larger wheels. The Cadenza isn't a slouch in the corners either, but it's far from engaging and lacks the ultimate grip of the Maxima. Where the Kia does shine is in refinement. It does a better job of isolating noise and vibrations from occupants and has a more traditional premium car feel to it. Inside, the focus on occupants continues as the slightly longer Cadenza offers more rear legroom, and the rear seat cushion is incredibly comfortable and there's a bit more headroom than found in the Maxima. The increased size also allows for a larger trunk, although the Cadenza's rear seats fold in a single unit unlike the Maxima's split folding seats and there are no straps in the trunk to lower them like are found in the Nissan. Neither car offers much headroom for the driver, but it feels a little more cramped inside the Kia here. The dashboard is set really low, which is great for shorter drivers, but taller drivers like me kind of feel perched up on top of the car. When it comes to the question of value, both cars come loaded up with the latest technology, like ventilated front seats, adaptive cruise control, a heated steering wheel, and dual pane moonroofs. The Kia one-ups the Nissan by offering things like power folding mirrors and lane departure warning, while the Nissan counters with 360 degree cameras and a sport mode. All of this technology does add up, and as tested, the Cadenza Limited comes in at just under $45,000. Surprisingly, the Maxima is the cheaper car here, and a loaded up Platinum is just under $41,000. And despite being faster and more powerful, the Maxima actually gets better fuel economy. During my testing, I averaged 24.5 miles per gallon in the Maxima compared to just 22.8 miles per gallon here in the Cadenza. And a little icing on the cake is the fact that the Maxima receives a top safety pick plus rating from the IIHS while the Cadenza does not. 
It's no surprise that the newer, more modern Nissan Maxima is the better choice here. Cheaper to buy, better on gas, and more fun to drive, it is the better in-betweener for those who want a little bit of everything. But its reign may be short-lived as there's an all-new Kia Cadenza around the corner.